Hey there, hi y'all, how you doing? It's me, Barb. And look at what I have here. A McDonald's McFlurry. I've never had one before. Now, if you have, let me know what you think of them. Now, I don't know if I've even had, look at that. Look at that, all you all. I don't even know if I've had a Shamrock Shake before from McDonald's. Now, I may have had a mint shake like decades ago, maybe like at Christmas or maybe it. I, I I really don't know. I really don't know. So, um, but I don't recall it. So this will be fun. But this is the McFlurry Oreo Shamrock. The, the Oreo Shamrock McFlurry. Isn't that right? Or the Oreo Mint McFlurry? Well, you'll see it on the title. Anyway, look at this business in here. Oh my goodness. Now, are you supposed to stir it? I saw him stirring it a little bit, which you would think that they would have some kind of machine for that. Well, maybe that's what this is. Okay. <laughs> I could use a little pick-me-up today, you all. Don't you all have those kind of days? We all do. Some just show it more than others. <laughs> I had someone once who, she'd come crying to my office almost every day, and I thought, well, at least she's getting stuff out. Whoop! Sorry. Ooh, it's minty. Smells minty. Almost smells like toothpaste. I don't know. We'll have to see. Now, I heard, I never understood these straws before at McDonald's, but apparently it's something to do with holding the shake in place or the McFlurries in place or something. I don't know. It helps. It helps with what they're doing. They're weird. Okay, I'm moving this around. Maybe I shouldn't since I'm doing a taste test. But anyway, let's take a little bite, right? Hmm. It tastes like a little toothpaste tasting. Not that I won't eat it. I'm trying to decide if the Oreo works with it. They're very tiny little pieces. Let me get a thing. Maybe if they were bigger? I don't know. Hang on. I've got to do this right. See how tiny those little Oreo pieces are? Oh, there's a big one right there. Beep. Sunlight is so weird to work with. It's really a very cloudy day again. Oh, I got a little bit of the cream from the Oreo. That makes it kind of nice. It lightens up the mint. I don't know if the Oreo really adds to it. Now, I think like semi-sweet chocolate chips would. When I think of mint, I think of creamy and light. I'll just have to keep eating and letting you know. I mean, it's, it's all right. Excuse me. These spoons are funny. Do you have them in your countries? If somebody's from another country, do you have these kind of spoons in your country at McDonald's? And do you guys um, celebrate St. Patrick's Day in your country? And if you do, do you, does your McDonald's have something special? Do you have the Shamrock Shakes? I've never, I don't think I've had the Shamrock Shake. I might have to try the Shamrock Shake. And if I don't try it this year, I'll try it next year. But I just thought this looked kind of nifty swifty. I don't even know if it's new or not. I'll have to check. Maybe they've had them for years. I just don't know anything. What a great reviewer I am. <laughs> Huh. It's not bad, but I think the Oreo takes away from it, honestly. And you know, Oreo kind of hooked up with McDonald's, I would think. You'd have to get permission, wouldn't you? I don't know these things. Anyway, let me take another bite, and then maybe we'll do a BBQ. Barb's Besties questions. No, I think I'd rather just have the shake, and I've never had the shake. Well, maybe I have. I don't know. Or a hot fudge mixed in with this, with the mint shake. Oh, the shamrock shake. Ooh, now that would be good. Have a hot fudge sundae with. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I like it enough. I would never get it again. 
I give it maybe a six. I mean, it's kind of toothpastey tasting, but it's not bad. It's fun. Probably fun for the kiddos and everything. Hey, I'm going to do a BBQ though. I'm going to keep eating it and let you know. Maybe I'll change my mind. I do change my mind on these reviews sometimes. Oh, it's very, very sweet. Very minty tasting. Okay, here's a question from Maya K. She said, how do you stay so joyful and positive? <laughs> joyful and positive. Well, first of all, you just see me here, right? You don't see me at home. You don't see me everywhere else. I mean, I can get, I can get, you know, frustrated and I can get, I'm tired and I can get, you know, my feelings hurt just like everybody else. And, um, I can get upset. I can get frustrated. I've been angry before. I get frustrated when people aren't um, truthful or they pretend that everything's fine when it's not. Like say, a, say in customer service and they, they just like look at you with a blank stare and there's something wrong with their or, your order or something and they don't apologize or they, or you know, some people, what, sometimes I get a little, it's asking if, how do I stay joyful and positive? I tell you all the negative stuff. Well, that is part of those staying positive and joyful is being honest, right? But I've always said, first of all, I when I was in my pre-teens, well, 12, 13, 14, I started reading Norman Vincent Peale. If you've never read him, it might be a cool thing for you to try if you're just trying to change your attitude towards life. And it's the power of positive thinking, basically. Now, that can get you in the deficit, too, because sometimes you'll deny the truth or deny reality or deny the hardships and then you don't deal with them and that's I don't think that's healthy either I think the healthiest way is to, to deal with whatever it's your past or your present or a situation that's difficult and sometimes you don't do it in the best way but if it's unhealthy for you you're advocating for yourself and advocating for a healthy positive joyful life when I was in my late third no my late 20s I remember writing I I, I I can't say it was really a journal. I just wrote in it maybe about seven times. But anyway, but I remember saying, I know surface joy, but I want to know deep joy. And I, and I see there's a big difference. Surface joy is when you just kind of like feel it, but you may not feel it deeply. Like I had never cried out of joy. And I have so many times now. But I really feel like in order to feel deep, deep joy and really absorb that, you have to deal with some of the unhealthy things in your life or in your past or whatever. But anyway, so um, so what I was going to say is that, you know, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what has happened in your life, you can choose to dwell on the things that bring you down or you can choose to dwell on the things that bring you up. You know, like um, like uh, when I couldn't walk for three years. Now, I could walk a little bit, but it was I was all lopsided. My hips were free-floating. Or when I was in great pain, when I had to stare at a ceiling for six months. It's kind of like, um, that wasn't a different time. But I just mean, um, or when I was in emotional pain, is that the thing that I try to always grab onto, and I have in my life, is what's beautiful around me, what's wonderful. Like when, when I lived in New York City, okay, I didn't prepare for this, obviously. Um, when I lived in New York, excuse me, New York City, um, I was really having a kind of a downtime, and and um, I was looking out the window, and you could just see another building right in front of you, right? But on the corner of my eye, I saw a plant. I had a plant on my little dresser, and that moment, I just stared at the plant and thought about it growing, and it's sitting there all alone, and it's just trying to absorb life and grow and be beautiful, and I, and uh, that helped me. That healed me, and I. Uh, it totally healed me, but you know what I mean. It gave me hope. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that acknowledging your truth, because your truth may be different from everyone else's around you, you know, and that's happened to me before. But also, like when I said hope just a minute ago, there was a time in my life where I didn't have any hope. I didn't believe in the word hope. But what I did believe in, and I said this to a friend of mine, is I believed in the isness of life. You know, I believe in that life has, that life sometimes life just is and um and you just kind of come along and bump along you know and I'm, I keep when I'm talking to you I keep looking up here and I wish you could see it it's a 
It looks almost like a birch tree, which I think birch trees are beautiful, but it's really a sycamore tree. And it's just that higher branches are all white. So it's caught my eye. So see there again, I could sit here and talk about, I don't know what else is around me that's kind of crummy. You know, this car that's broken down or the trash can that's got trash all over the place or whatever, or this, this, uh, light pole that's bent over looks like it's going to fall no one's taking care of it and another pole's bent over looks like that's going to fall too i could dwell on that but and i had to look for those things but i'm such in the habit of looking for the healthy and the beautiful and the joyful so um well just okay look right behind me see right behind me i don't know what it is you could look at um tangled twigs and debris and stuff but if you look up there, you know what that is? That's a red bud getting ready to bloom. So that's another kind of, you know, like way of looking at things. It's just like looking at, you know, the old saying, can you look at the glasses half empty or half full or just in the middle, you know, and then you don't really feel. But, um, and so, and some of you say, oh, one, one time I was working at a restaurant and I was in the kitchen and I was a server and, and this woman stopped me and I was new and she just goes, oh, you just live your life with rose colored glasses. You haven't lived your life. And I was like, and I just looked at her and stepped away because she was just kind of, she was angry with her life and everything. And she thought my life had been perfect. And I just, I stepped away and I thought to myself, she doesn't know me, you know, just because I'm smiling, just because I'm joyful doesn't mean I haven't had hardships, you know, um, and I have found in my life some of the most joyful people, some of the people with the twinkliness eyes are the ones that have gone through hard, hard times. I mean, some of the people have gone through the Holocaust and, and are survivors from the Holocaust, but they have that twinkle in their eye because they know how to grab onto life, you know, because they know how precious it is. Precious it is. So when, when you asked me that question, Maya, I, I think your name is Maya, isn't it? Or is it Maya, M-A-Y-A? -A. Um, how do you stay joyful and positive? Of course, nothing is always, so I'm not always joyful and positive, um, but I'm, I, I, try to, I try to look at the good side of things or, the, or a way of finding the, the beauty in things, even when I'm having a hard time. And, um, and if I can't find my way out, I try to reach out for help, whether it's with friends or whether it's with my partner or whether it's with my little dog or whether it's with a therapist, you know. Um, um, I know in our generation, um, I'm in, I'm 66, I'm 66 and a half, but you know, a lot of people thought, oh, therapists are kooks, da, 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 you know, don't go to, well, there are excellent people, healthy people, and there are not so healthy people and angry people in every profession, you know, whether it's a waitress or it's a, you know, it, whether it's a, a post, a postman or a firefighter or a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor. You know, we're just all human. I always say we're all humming, you know, because we're just, um, there's just variety everywhere. So I guess, um, I don't know if that answers the question, but um, I just, uh, and I and I always kind of try to ask myself, I try to listen within to that, whether you call it the light inside of you or you talk about, or if it's the divine or if it's God or prayer or meditation or if it's energy equals MC square or whether it's mother nature, father nature, father sky, whatever you believe in, um, you know, and some don't believe in any of that. You know, if you're an atheist, you know, just kind of like, well, how do you want to live your life? Do you want to live it staring at, staring at the holes in the ground and, and the gutter? Or do you want to look at the sky? You know, um, and that's one thing I have found is, you know, even people without money, there's something, you know, you can find sweetness and kindness with another human being or wait, see now like right there. I was like, whoa, what's happening? This FedEx truck was just zooming around the corner and just stopped right in front of me. And it's like, relax, it's not going to hit you. <laughs> but I guess what I'm trying to say too is not to live in denial of the truth, not to live in denial of of things that are unhealthy for you because that doesn't bring you deep joy and um, in the end it can bring you a lot of sadness and anger and and even rage sometimes so and, and another thing I'm gonna say and I'm gonna be quiet because I'm not a f psychologist I'm not a therapist I'm not a counselor I'm just old me but um, is that one of the other ways I stay positive or, or 
try to be have a beautiful outlook on life is that I have reached out for help when I needed it. You know, when I, I, I there was a time when I was in this hotel and I thought I'd never leave it. I said, I'm never going to leave here. And I think I just called a friend and we had a talk and she called me for the every day for, for a while just to check in on me or, or, um, when I just, when things weren't make, when things weren't adding up, you know, like in your life, if you, I got to stop talking. Okay. I'm going to finish with this. If things aren't adding up in your life, say if you're having huge reactions to something that's really small, then most likely that's something that's triggering you from your past and kind of letting yourself say, maybe I should look at this and get some professional help, whatever. But anyway, everybody's different. And I think, you know, us learning not to judge each other and to condemn each other and to shame each other. Because when we do that, we're harming ourselves too. Um, you know, and and kind of like everybody on the planet's got stuff and everybody on the planet's got something beautiful. You know, um, and that's what I believe. Now, you may not believe that way. But anyway, I'm talking too long. Um, oh, look at it. I haven't even been eating my, <laughs> my McFlurry. See, that's what happens. Uh, hmm. I say... This for me is probably a six, one out of ten. Or maybe even a five. It may even be a four. It's fun though. So I think some people think it's an eight or a ten because it's just fun. I mean, I'm breaking it down. But you know, to taste a little Oreo, to have a little mint for the holidays is fun. Mm. I hope those people are okay. May they be safe. May the drivers be safe. It's fun, you all. Again, McDonald's. McDonald's is our kind of place. Boop, boop. Well, it's fun. You know, on, you know, if I just don't care about reviews and I'm not going to analyze it, I'll say it's a nine. But if I'm going to analyze it, I'd probably say it's a five. Maybe a four. But um, anyway, may I try the Shamrock Shake next? You all take good care of yourselves. Be good to yourself. You know, you're, you are important too. You are precious. And um, when you can see how beautiful you are, it's easier to see the beauty in others. Okay, you all take good care of yourselves. And until the next time, tally ho, good neighbors. Bye-bye.